Hi guys and welcome to Mentimes YouTube channel. Congratulations on reaching up to this level in the financial modeling for Titan. And in the past video we put in those assumptions for revenue and overall until now you could say that 60% of the model is actually done, right? Because the revenue drivers or revenue forecasting is the major challenge in any model and that's where most of the analysts should actually spend time. Now that let's try to understand that how would we try to look at the other cost like for example in the income statement salary expenses interest expenses marketing expenses tax expenses dividend distribution all of these are more or less common size analysis and let's try to understand how we can incorporate common size analysis to forecast this so let's get started All right, guys. Welcome to the next session. And as discussed, now we'll get into making the operational cost matrix. Right? It's called the cost matrix, where most of the costs, right, uh, will be directly related to the revenue, right, as a percentage. It's also called as the common size analysis. And uh, what we'll do is first let's get the template in place, and let me also get these numbers updated. Okay, so we have our numbers till twenty-seven. Now, what I mean to say by uh, you know common size analysis is, is that cost expenses like employee benefit expense, right? Uh, cost of goods sold, right? Uh, other expenses, marketing expenses, all these expenses. Finally, when the business has uh, matured enough, uh, which in Titan case because it's running since nineteen eighty-seven, tend to be fairly stable. Right, as a percentage of revenue, but expenses like depreciation, amortization expenses are not a function of revenue. Rather, they are a function of what are the total number of assets that we have. Right. Similarly, finance expenses is not a function of revenue, but it's a function of total debt that we have. Right. And similarly, tax is a function of PBT. Right. So, hence, what we can do is we can get our revenue numbers here first, since historically, right. So we can just go to income statement and link our revenue since two thousand seven. Uh, I would encourage you to link the uh, the revenue apart from the other income. Okay, and uh, oh, sorry, I have not linked the forecasted revenue. So let's get our forecasted revenue from revenue drivers out here. Okay, so there you go, our revenue. Right now, let's start putting what are the various costs that we have. So we have first is. Cost of materials consumed, and we have employee benefit expenses, right? Then we have our other expenses, and let's see if we have anything else that we can actually get, right? So purchases, stock in uh, stock and trade changes in inventory is obviously not we are not going to really consider that. Because that's a function of cost of material consumed itself, so I'm not going to really take that number out here. But let's take the real numbers now. Let's just link the cost of material consumed, then employee benefit expense from income statement, other expenses from income statement, right? And now what we're going to see is what is this as a percentage of sales or revenue. So let's just divide this by revenue, right? So I'm going to just copy this and extend it till our forecast, uh, the historical period, which is still FY23. That's the reason why I actually updated the numbers for FY23 so that we get updated numbers also of what is it as a percentage of revenue. If you see, mostly stable. Right, nothing erratic, and this can be fairly done easily if the company is uh, at a larger scale. Right, not very. In case of startups, it's very difficult. Right. So now, if we have to obviously uh, fairly assume what is going to be as a percentage of sales, we can just take an average, or if you want to take a median to be much more safer than the average, is to just take the median. Right, and just 
consider it as a percentage similar to what we have done before right there you go so now we can just do a reverse calculation multiply the revenue with the percentage right so our costs have come the majority of the costs right uh, in order that you understand that these are forecasted numbers it would be a better idea to follow a color code right so just follow a color code okay now what do we do uh, in case of tax so for tax you need to get the pbt numbers right profit before tax so let's go to the income statement select ebt till fi23 and don't take the tax numbers of the income statement because that's not really the cash paid in tax it is wise to take the cash from the cash flow statement so go to the cash flow statement and go to the operational part and you'll see the taxes paid right so because we want to look at effective tax rate right so let's divide this so that becomes our effective tax rate right so we're going to assume that is going to be similar to last year so this is considering all of the dtl and dta exemptions whatever right and once we get our pbt numbers here then uh, we can obviously we actually don't need the pbt numbers we can just directly take the uh, tax rate from there right now one last thing which we can do is we just looking at dividends so we are not really seeing dividends as a percentage of anything but we are just trying to look what kind of dividends are we getting overall so we can go to the cash flow statement and go to the financing cash flow and uh, we should see dividend speed right so since it's a cash outflow we'll just make it positive right so that's about uh, dividends now if you want to calculate this as dps you can fairly do it simply by div, uh, first of all multiplying this by 10 to 7 and dividing it by the number of shares right so since the numbers below are into also let's see if the matrix is actually correct oops i think i did a mistake here let me just close the brackets properly Okay. Right, so it's about five point six rupees per share is what we are, you know, stating after tax. Okay, considering the dividend distribution tax, so we'll just assume that has to be same, right? And if you multiply whatever you're assuming with the number of shares, then you get the total dividends. So again, following a color code so that you know exactly what you're assuming. So we just multiply the dividend per share with the number of shares that we are obviously forecasting which is can't really forecast the number of shares and generally the assumption with dividends is that the company has started paying dividends uh you know as a percentage uh it generally tends to continue that another way of looking at this is also uh dividing the dividends uh as a percentage of total profit and seeing what is the payout ratio right so we could look at pbt and see what kind of payout ratio do we actually get right so uh, we don't have the updated numbers obviously this is a reminder go this is a reminder go All right, so we don't have the updated numbers uh, for FI23, but the idea is that the company uh, in its con call reports have confirmed that they're trying to stick to 30% payout, right? So uh, obviously there can be a debate on whether to assume this or this, but in terms of valuation it's really not going to matter much uh, because we will always be looking at uh, the free cash flows 
and mm-hmm. when we're looking at the free cash flows of course you know dividends are a part of cash flow so it really doesn't matter much right so let's assume a 30% payout or 5.6 whichever is greater i would be more convinced with 30% because they've been very very categorically stated that their board is convinced on 30% payout to be the norm for dividend payout all right so that's the cost matrix uh, basic values now let's put these numbers in the income statement so that we have our interim uh, you know income statement right so let's get our basic costs so employee benefit expense you can bet, get from our cost matrix then our cost of material consumed right so we can just take the calculation from the left right and you can see that the gross margin is somewhat same right uh then other expenses directly we're somewhere around this okay <coughs> so we left with depreciation but we can still without the depreciation also we can get the ebit so that we have some pat numbers to start putting in the balance sheet right so we will put the values later on here so don't think that we're not going to put here we're going to put that we're going to put the ebt numbers also uh, the finance expenses also but right now we're just getting a fair sense of calculation so now let's multiply the ebt with the cost matrix tax rate which we just assumed as 26% okay, so that's going to be the tax for now and now let's reduce the ebt with tax and then get the numbers so that's our inter impact numbers right and if i assume that these are going to be the number of shares in the future as well considering that this hopefully is in crores then this is our eps okay for now because obviously we we have to put depreciation numbers as well we have to put finance expenses as well and we will also cross check a little bit on margins right uh just to be very clear on whether we are not overestimating the cash flows okay so that's always the worry in a financial model that you are not overestimating anything right and other income other income at the end once we have the final cash values we are not really expecting much of other income because titan tends to invest a lot in its own business uh but even so like right? so that's the completion of cost matrix uh the next uh session is going to be very interesting because we have to take care of very uh, uh you you can say probably the most important aspect of uh you know valuation is getting your working capital accounts correct now the working capital accounts i mean the trade receivables right the inventory right which is a huge part of their costs and your trade payables right so these three aspects uh, have a very interesting uh, bit to it in case of titan because if you do not do a little deep research in what's going on here in their inventory then you will be mistaken and your valuations might not give you the right picture right so uh, in the next session i will be discussing that so i'll see you convinced on 30% payout to be the norm for dividend payout all right so that's the cost matrix uh, basic values now let's put these numbers in the income statement so that we have our interim uh, you know income statement right so let's get our basic costs so employee benefit expense you can bet, get from our cost matrix then our cost of material consumed right so we can just take the calculation from the left 
right? and you can see that the gross margin is somewhat same right uh then other expenses directly go somewhere around this okay <coughs> so we left with depreciation but we can still without the depreciation also we can get the ebit so that we have some pat numbers to start putting in the balance sheet right so we will put the values later on here so don't think that we're not going to put here we're going to put that we're going to put the ebt numbers also uh, the finance expenses also but right now we're just getting a fair sense of calculation so now let's multiply the ebt with the cost matrix tax rate which we just assumed as 26% okay so that's going to be the tax for now and now let's reduce the ebt with tax and then get the numbers so that's our internal impact numbers right and if i assume that these are going to be the number of shares in the future as well considering that this hopefully is in crores then this is our eps okay for now because obviously we we have to put depreciation numbers as well we have to put finance expenses as well and we will also cross check a little bit on margins right uh just to be very clear on whether we are not overestimating the cash flows okay so that's always the worry in a financial model that you are not overestimating anything right and other income other income at the end once we have the final cash values we are not really expecting much of other income because titan tends to invest a lot in its own business uh but even so right so that's the completion of cost matrix uh the next uh session is going to be very interesting because we have to take care of very uh, uh you you can say probably the most important aspect of uh, you know valuation is getting your working capital accounts correct now the working capital accounts i mean the trade receivables right the inventory right which is a huge part of their costs and your trade payables right so these three aspects uh, have a very interesting uh, bit to it in case of titan because if you do not do a little deep research in what's going on here in their inventory then you will be mistaken and your valuations might not give you the right picture right so uh, in the next session i will be discussing that so i'll see you